creatures uh, One another million more reach those heights Always set a fear and then I won't deny that work Never toss, look in my eyes, I'm on the rock Surprise Yesterday, Lexus announced the Lexus IS500 um, that they're going to drop here for the 2022 model year. That comes with a 5.0 liter V8. Um, essentially, more or less the same idea that the Lexus ISF brought. It has 400 and I think 60 some odd horsepower. And um, it's basically the same engine from the Lexus LC500. The strange thing is, rather than call it, the strange thing is rather than call it the Lexus ISF, they decided to go with the more toned down Lexus IS500, which a lot of people are confused about, because that would imply that there is a good chance that they're still releasing a V8 uh, supercharged or twin turbo V8 iteration of the Lexus ISF. I think that's pretty cool. Um, I'm, I'm strongly hoping that they do bring back the Lexus ISF because there's a lot of people that were disappointed with the Lexus ISF being discontinued in 2014 or for the 2014 model year. But the unfortunate truth is with certain cars like that, not many people are buying them because it's a very specific car. So if you're not an enthusiast, what do you care about an excess of 460 horsepower in your car you probably don't by default a lot of cars or trucks or SUVs that have a lot of horsepower and a lot of torque just come with it anyway but this you have to pay generally it's upwards of thirty thousand uh, dollars in premium for this performance car now it's not just the engine you're getting an updated suspension you're getting a, a sport tune suspension no less um, you know modifications things like that so I mean I guess that that part's kind of cool but you're still paying a premium for example my Lexus ISF even uh, 11 years later I had to pay Because I'm logical 
that's my that's my problem uh, logically I think what happens if something were to break uh, how much is that gonna cost out of pocket you know 10 15 years down the road uh, and especially now for example my taillights are aftermarket what if I want an aftermarket setup is it gonna be possible to transition from the OEM to aftermarket in the future so I mean it's cool now but is it gonna be cool down the road when you have to replace it is a question but it's not about the exterior as beautiful as it is it's about the engine and performance I'm a little bit disappointed because not because it's not a true Lexus ISF people are complaining about oh they could have done a lot better like it's not an all-new car Lexus ISF was never an all-new car they use the same platform as the Lexus IS 250 and slapped a V8 uh, 5.0 liter V8 into it which is great I'm not complaining about that in theory if you want to get really technical and deep and gritty into the history of the Lexus ISF yeah they you know did some performance testing they did a lot of um, you know they were nitpicking more or less to determine what was the best way to make a performance car now Toyota which is an which is the primary arm of Lexus more or less uh, they originally stated they're done with making boring cars what if I want an aftermarket setup is it gonna be possible to transition from the OEM to aftermarket in the future so I mean it's cool now but is it gonna be cool down the road when you have to replace it is a question but it's not about the exterior as beautiful as it is it's about the engine and performance I'm a little bit disappointed because not because it's not a true Lexus ISF people are complaining about oh they could have done a lot better like it's not an all-new car Lexus ISF was never an all-new car they use the same platform as the Lexus IS 250 and slapped a V8 uh, 5.0 liter V8 into it which is great I'm not complaining about that in theory if you want to get really technical and deep and gritty into the history of the Lexus ISF yeah they you know did some performance testing they did a lot of um, you know they were nitpicking more or less to determine what was the best way to make a performance car now Toyota which is an which is the primary arm of Lexus more or less uh, they originally stated they're done with making boring cars so does that imply that Lexus does that imply that is pouring over into Lexus and that's uh, that they're gonna encourage more performance oriented beautiful outlandish styling probably I'm seeing a lot of that in the Lexus IS 250 and the Lexus IS 500 they look great and while I'm disappointed that they didn't do more than they could have uh, I could have seen easily over 600 horsepower out of the Lexus IS 500 but again that could mean that they're waiting to release the Lexus ISF um, for those true enthusiasts uh, so I'm just being nitpicky if I had the option if I had to choose between the newer BMWs between the newer Mercedes AMGs oh absolutely I would go with the Lexus IS 500 all day long But it comes back down to how long is this gonna last how long is this idea of wanting to make a very unique car going to last because they're about numbers a lot of automakers are getting rid of their cars because of the numbers uh, for example Ford is getting rid of their sedans their cars to better meet the market or meet the needs of the market rather because if you remember last time there was a recession GM had to do away with a lot of their cars a lot of their lineups so in 
foresight, I guess. They're getting rid of them. I'm super happy that Lexus decided not to because a, a lot of people still want sedans. A lot of people want cars. Like, I have the option of driving a truck every day. I have the option of driving a truck every day if I really wanted to, but I don't like how cumbersome it is. I, I love trucks, no, no less. But I don't like how cumbersome it is. I don't, I don't like how uh, difficult it is to drive in the city, how difficult it is to drive um, around parking lots, that type of stuff. If I'm just doing everyday stuff, I take my ISF. Now the other thing is, I, I, I like having fun. You can have fun with the five liter V8 and the F-150 that I have, but it's heavy. I mean, it's it's an elephant for lack of better terms. I wouldn't say it struggles to get out of its own way, but you you gotta you gotta romp on it to even do it. The Lexus ISF, on the other hand, has a very similar 5.0 liter V8, um, and it's fun. I enjoy driving it, but ultimately, I think what it comes down to is the Lexus ISF has 416 horsepower. The Lexus IS500 has roughly 460 some odd horsepower. If you got a supercharger, if you got PPE headers, if you got you know an exhaust, the whole nine yards on the Lexus ISF, it doesn't take a lot to surpass that 460 horsepower of the new Lex, Lexus IS500, and you're saving a lot of money. Now I get it. A lot of people want uh, the stock performance vehicles because you can uh, warranty it out if something were to happen. Uh, most of the time you can warranty parts on performance parts anyway, but it doesn't really cover the entire engine if something were to be catastrophic. So there's that. Um, but if I was looking to just get a car that was performance oriented that I didn't have to worry about, uh, that I didn't plan on modifying, I would absolutely consider the Lexus IS500. Although I still like the Lexus GSF and the Lexus uh, Lexus RCF. Those are really good options too.